So today we're working with normal probability distributions in Excel. We've got our worksheet here. And remember, you're always going to start by putting your name up at the top. Always put your name uh, on the work. And we've got an important note here. And it says, to avoid confusion, draw a picture and label it. Also remember that Excel, like your calculator, expects areas from a point to negative infinity. Now, I've actually kind of helped you with the picture. I've gotten you started, but you need to continue to work with this picture. Here's a normal distribution, and um, I guess I stole a picture here. I've got, I have X bar, and I probably should have just X for this particular um, exercise. And I've marked mu on there, but I've only got that symbol there. I haven't labeled it with the appropriate values from the word problem. And I would encourage you to do that. So you need to print this. You can mark on it and write on this diagram. That's why I provided it there for you. Okay, I'm just going to try to kind of get you started. Um, I've also labeled some other points. You can see it says this is the desired probability. Now, you don't know that yet because we haven't read the problem, but this brings up exactly what we're saying in this important note. Notice that I have from a given point an area shaded in yellow, and I'm indicating that this is the desired probability. But in the important note, what I'm reminding you of is that Excel, like your calculator, um, is going to expect or is going to output an area from that point all the way to negative infinity. Okay? Some charts will give you the area from this line to the mean, regardless of where that point is. Okay? It would give it give you that as a starting point and the mean is the stopping point. Well, our starting point is the same, but our stopping point is always going to be negative infinity. So you may want to draw an arrow or shade to make yourself understand that the answer you get is not going to be the yellow area. You're going to have to go a couple steps further. This is what we want. What we get, I would encourage you to label from this point to negative infinity. Let's walk through the problem and hopefully this will make a little bit more sense to you. It says, the manager of a deli counter has observed that lunch meat orders follow a normal distribution. The typical, very key word right there, so key that I'm going to uh, highlight it a little bit. The typical lunch meat order is one pound with a standard deviation of 0.25 pounds. What's the probability that a customer will buy more than, also worth marking up more than 1.5 pounds of lunch meat. Now, from the problem, I understand I want a probability, and probability is the same thing as saying what is the area under the curve. Now, what area is it? It's from a, that point, 1.5, on my x-axis, more than. So, in other words, more than 1.5, this yellow area. All right, now, to me, the hardest part of a word problem is drawing the picture, labeling it, and by labeling it, I mean putting actual values with variables. So when it says, what is the x value? Well, x values are things that I put along this. They tend to have units of measure. So pounds is our unit of measure. The x value is what is the probability of customer will buy more than 1.5. So 1.5 is our x value. What is the mean? Well, the mean is what is typical on average, right? So typically, it says the lunch meat order is one pound. They tell us in the problem the standard deviation is 0.25. Now, <clears throat> remember that by default, your calculator, Excel, some charts, not all charts, will give you the area from a point to negative infinity. For my students, the, if you're using the chart in your book, it's not from this point to negative infinity. It would be from this point to the mean. So be very careful about this. As an as a in-between step, I want you to calculate from this point to negative infinity. The function in Excel for working with normal probability functions is called norm dist. How do I do that? How do I find that out? Well, I'm going to use this little insert function key up here. See how I'm clicking on that? And maybe I don't know that. So I'm going to type normal distribution and then either press enter or hit go. And you could 
you could go through and read about each one of these functions. And if you did, you would eventually get to, and you may find some of these quite useful, but you would eventually get to the one I'm going to demonstrate, norm dist. Click OK. The first thing it wants to know is, what is the x value, the value for which you want the distribution? Well, that's 1.5, so I'm going to just click. See how it puts B14 in there? Next thing it wants to know is, what is the mean? Well, the mean is one pound of lunch meat. It says, what is the standard deviation? So I'm going to click on that line. 0.25. And now it wants to know, is this probability going to be cumulative? Well, now you may remember back to our discrete uh, discoveries. And when, when our data was discrete, we would type false. Well, that's because there were big gaps in our data. You know, if we said 1, 2, 3, 4, there's gaps between 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 because there's an infinite number of numbers in there. Well, now we're working with continuous data. There, we want all those probabilities from that point to negative infinity. So now it's true. Cumulative, yes, that's true. So there's our answer. Point nine seven seven two four nine 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 right and it could go on and on now where is that area let me see if I can um, label it in a way that uh, that you can see this that area that we just described is that it's from this point to negative infinity it's the probability below that but in our problem solving effort we didn't want to know that area or probability. We wanted to know the probability or the area from that point to the right. How can we get that? Well, we know the area under the entire curve is 1. So if I say 1 minus this probability, I would have this probability or this area in yellow. Well, I can do that in my calculator. I can do it in Excel. In Excel, all functions start or formulas start with an equal sign. 1, which is the entire probability, minus what I've calculated in this previous cell. Now I have the probability. Now the final thing I want to do is express this as a percentage and it's at this point that I want to also do a little bit of rounding. Okay, Even though we have all these decimal places and more that we cannot see, it's inappropriate to carry all these through. Typically in our homework we're asked to round our, decimal, uh, our values to four decimal places. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to initially type 0 0.022 and that would be what? 8, right? Now, you can see that this is by default already set to display 2, um, but I want to express it as a percentage. Now, Excel has a neat little tool up here called the percent button. Um, I'm going to click that as kind of a shortcut. It tells me it's 2%. If I do want to display some decimals, you can see the buttons I'm clicking to do that. Naturally, another way if you, is simply to multiply the number by 100. So now we know that the probability that a lunch meat order will be greater than 1.5 pounds is only 2.28% as represented in this yellow area. I hope this helps and I hope that you find Excel a useful tool.